No, there's one. There's one. Yeah. That's uh, a pretty fair size one, too. All right. Cruising up in the foam. Gone. He's gone under. Reptile hunter and scientist Mark O'Shea has come to Florida to investigate an unexpected comeback by nature's great survivor. The crocodiles outlived the dinosaurs, but in the 1970s, one species, the American crocodile, went to the brink of extinction. Now the beast is back. That's a big one. Yeah. This is also the only place in the world where crocodiles and alligators coexist, but the crocodiles heavily outnumbered. Unlike the alligator, the American crocodile is more at home in the tropics. The south of Florida is the very limit of its range. It lives mainly in Central and South America. But the nuclear power plant at Turkey Point has kick-started the crocodile's revival. 168 miles of cooling water canals are ideal habitat. Reptile scientist Joe Wasilewski oversees a breeding program here. Look at here. Oh, yeah. This is like a crocodile That's tail. That's tail drags. This is a, this, these markings, you know, I always say to people, never camp on a sandbank if somebody's been riding a bicycle on it. Because it means there's a croc there. It just looks like bicycle track. Yep. It's a unique revival for a large reptile. At Turkey Point and in the Everglades, Mark plans to find the cause and whether it can last. There are still only a few hundred crocodiles in Florida, and Mark knows their comeback could be short-lived. Alligators are a far more common sight, numbering well over a million. When people are around, crocodiles tend to disappear. They've been known to cause panic on the golf course, but it's really the crocodile that's in danger. When there are nuisance crocs, that's very sad, but it actually means that the populations have got to the point where they are recovering rapidly. So it's almost a good sign when people are having to remove crocodiles permanently. Mark! Yeah. And this business is what I call a two-hander. Yeah. Unfortunately, precious crocodiles are often mistaken for alligators and killed. You got him? Oh, but the two species diverged more than 50 million years ago. Few realize that humans and chimpanzees are much more closely related. Right. Okay. Crocodilian similarity is only skin deep. I'll get out the crocodile. This is an American alligator, and it's quite a dark animal. Whereas that's an American crocodile. And you'll see immediately there's a color difference. That's olive green brown, and it's pointed snout. Wait. So rather than this nice, smooth, round curve, we got him. Rather than a nice okay. smooth round curve, there's a notch behind the nostrils. So let's put yeah, shoes mat down. And you can see the teeth protrude, the fourth tooth, the lower jaw protrudes up through the notch. Very narrow snout in comparison to the alligator. The scales on the back of the neck are much more pronounced, and they're actually quite sharp and they will cut you, whereas these on the gator don't. I, if, if I was a betting man, which I'm not, and you, you were to ask me which would I expect to be the winner out of two equal-sized animals, it'd be the croc every time. His temperament is, is uh, much more of the, uh, much more aggressive. They're so quicker. And it's much better at taking fish and right. almost any prey. They estimate 1.5 million alligators. 1 .5 now, is it? Yeah. And they're estimating 500 crocodiles left. So uh, take that percentage. <laughs> Crocodile may be outnumbered, but Joe's confident that the population at Turkey Point is on the up. arrive during breeding season, the best time to see if there's a healthy new generation of crocodiles. Mounds of earth left behind when the canals were dug out make perfect nesting sites for the females. 
They're above the high tide mark and give shelter from the weather. Mark investigates the key feature in the crocodile's regeneration. Now, you can see right here. Yep, drag marks. Uh, actually, there's three, which means she came in, came out, out, and somebody okay. came back again. She won't be on that side. There's a right breeze. Crocodilians do not like the wind. And that's blowing on that side. This is much more sheltered. Here's where there were, was a nest last year, and this area produces at least one nest every year. But we will come back later tonight to find out exactly where she is. Yeah. At night, Powerful searchlights pick out the telltale red eyes of a crocodile. He's under the bush! Slow, slow! Yes. Mark will only have a few seconds to catch the startled reptile. We put him down. Uh, that, 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 there. See it? There's eye shine. OK, yeah, I see it. All right. All right, this one's yours now. Okay. I'll shine you. It's on the shore. Is it? You might have to jump off. OK. Okay, he's ready to bolt. He's ready to bolt. You got him? Yeah, yeah. All right. There you go. Good oh, job. Yo, I was, uh, Are you in the mud? No, but I cracked my knee on a rock. You okay? Uh, yeah, I'm fine. I well, just... you got the crocodile. Of course I got the crocodile. Oh, okay, all right. Wonderful. <laughs> of course I got the crocodile. <laughs> Wonderful. That is a toddler, but that's important. Is it marked? Do you see any marks on it? No. Good, good, good. It's a new one for you. Yeah. This is stinky yeah. mud. I got it. Here I wow. come. Well, we got a whole bunch of science to do with this poor animal. He looks nice and healthy. He was till I landed on him and flattened him. <laughs> Ooh. How's your knee? Oh, it'll survive. I've got another one. <laughs> yeah, you were going to leap out of my hands and disappear into the water then, weren't you? It's going to put a microchip we're in him. We're going to put a microchip in him. We're going to weigh him. We're going to measure him. We're going to document this into history. And then the little fellow's going back. I'm going to get the microchip. Yeah, if this animal turned up in Key Largo and, or in Florida Bay or... or anywhere in, in Miami, you would definitely be able to trace it back to when it was captured we in this whole history. The one here. Yep. Now he says, I'm from Turkey Point. OK. There you go. All right, no blood, no nothing. And if you let's, want. Let's turn it on. Let's see. From now on, bingo. It's number 116749561A. One, <coughs> Up you go, little chapel. It's nice and warm in there. There you have it. Give him a little spook. Go on. These days. Even here, only one in 20 crocodiles makes it to maturity. If he gets us on it. Where is it? There it is. All right, I see it. Oh, uh, no, that's a big one. That is could it? be a mama. That could be a mother. I mean, it's catchable, but I, I'm not going to touch one. Yeah. There's a tail. Yes. A nesting female is Mark's evidence that the population's getting stronger. But with only 16 nesting sites on the canals, the crocodile's future survival is still in the balance. Try to get that, that's very easily captured, but there's no way, Mark, I'm going to no, if she jeopardize. Her eggs, she, she, she could have bought them all. It would be not good science. It wouldn't, no. Catch it right now, so. We go and find one that's either laid or find a male or something. Right. Both men are desperate to capture a big crocodile, but after five more hours on the airboat, they call it a night. On the way back, Mark spots a large male. He'll only have one chance to catch him.
was a beauty. God, we were so close that again. That was close. That was close. It was on his nose. That was close. Over 14 million people live in Florida, and a thousand more arrive every day. The cities are eating up vital habitat. For one more chance to catch a big crocodile, Mark heads for one of the last unspoiled regions in America, the Everglades. He's to meet Dr. Frank Mazzotti, who's bringing in new measures to protect the species. First up is a tour of the local nest sites. So, you ready to go out and take a look at some crocodiles? Yeah, sure am. Okay, here's gonna be our route. We're at the ranger station now. We're gonna be heading out here around Eagle Key. Yeah. Over to this really beautiful nesting beach out here. Give you some idea what Florida looked like before all those condos were on the beach. <laughs> yeah, before 14 million people. Yeah, arrived. too true, mate. Then later on this evening, we'll be going on up Taylor River where there's another nest site to what I call the heart of crocodile country, up through a series of ponds. That's where we'll wait for sundown and we'll begin the hunt, come back down the river. Excellent, excellent. So we'll be torching for them tonight. That's, that'll be later on this evening, yep. That's what we'll be doing. Red eyes. At night. Excellent, I love doing that. They must keep their eyes open. There may be a protective mother around. Not something you want to upset, crocodile or otherwise. Wow, this is really turned over. That's been does a lot of digging there. Before they hatch, crocodile eggs are in grave danger from the bandits of the natural world who have no predators and are on the increase. Oh, is this, we have raccoons already? Look at this, look at this. Raccoons found a nest already. Oh, no. We've got a nest here. Two nests, we think. And um, they've been hit by raccoons. They've dug up all the eggs, and you can see they've eaten them, wiped out, wiped out the whole clutch. There's got to be at least uh, two, if not three, clutches of eggs here, Mark, by the number we've seen so far. Yeah, I, I reckon you might be right, because there's about another dozen here. And especially the areas over which they were spread. Yep. You know, we're finding, like, different concentrations in different places. There's a big concentration here. See, old Frank, this isn't going to please you very much. Boy, you got another pile there, don't you? See how many we have here. The Everglades population has lost more than 100 eggs. See it, star spider? Yes, yes. Gasteracanther, isn't that a beauty? It is, orb weaver. Whenever I see uh, eggs like this, it never makes me happy. What's good about it is that we found out about it, and so I'm always encouraged when I know what happens. The crocodile is in such a, a dire um, strait with, with the fact that the numbers are so low that you can't afford to lose nests like this. If there's five nests here and you've lost three to raccoons, Already. it it's means that you've only got two at best this season. You can see it's a hard-shelled egg, uh, like a sea turtle or, or like a bird. Uh, but this also, this one here is a good illustration of the hard outer shell and the leathery inner membrane, which of course is like the lizards and snakes. This is quite tough. And a little baby with an egg tooth isn't going to make that much of an effect on that if it's very, very dry and solid and so the mother will come along and those incredibly powerful crushing jaws that she uses on her prey so efficiently are used very gently to crack the eggshell without har harming the youngster inside and then when it's out she may even carry the youngster to uh, a nursery to safety. We've uh, seen here where the mothers have carried both eggs and shells and the hatchlings up to two or three hundred meters away from a nest before she lets them go. You know, that's an intelligent creature. Yes, it is. I think so. None of this is the brains the size of a peanut. Um, that's an intelligent creature. There's a wake ahead of us. Something's pushing a lot of water. Could be a vanity. Could be. Or a crop. Unless it's a shoal of fish. Having witnessed the disaster at the nesting site, 
Mark is very excited at the possibility of studying a large adult crocodile. It's over here now. So excited, in fact, that he leaves the boat behind. Hey, yeah. I can't tell you exactly how deep this is because I've just hit the bottom of it head first. <laughs> the boat hit a snag, stopped dead. I'm on the front watching for br overhanging branches and crocodiles. And I carried on, head first, straight to the bottom of the creek. <laughs> so I'm trying to get back up to the surface as quick as possible. I'm wet, I'm going to be cold as well. I think. Uh, well, we'll see how the mosquitoes are, but if, if they're not too bad, I'm going to dispense with my shirt. But, uh, yeah, I hadn't planned to take an early bath. For our night survey? Yes, I'm ready. Okay, you got the nooses right behind you? Yeah, I've got it. We'll be heading up shining, and don't forget, if the animals are bigger than two meters, they could be nesting females, so we got to leave them alone. If they're over two meters? If they're over two meters, that's yeah, correct. Yeah, we don't want to disturb them. Yeah, just like it was, was for you guys at Turkey Point. Yep, yep. Exactly the same. Again, unless it's really big and we know it's a male, then we can go for it. Okay, and how big's that? Well, the biggest animal we've caught in South Florida has in, been in this river. In was, here? In here, 12 feet, 10 and a half inches. And that was a male? That was a male. That's a... So if we see we... anything big and I yell, go for it, go for it. How are we going to haul a 13-foot crocodile into this boat? We will not haul a 13-foot crocodile into this boat. We'll tie him up alongside of us. OK. But anything under two metres is fair game as well. Anything under two metres is fair game. Crocodiles can live for over 50 years. Plenty of time to learn to stay away from humans. There, yeah, I got him. Got him. Right over the far bank, right the far bank. There's another one right over there. He's gone down. No, he's still there. That's three. Let's go after this guy. In danger, a crocodile can stay underwater for more than half an hour, slowing its heart to a few beats per minute. He's gone down already. He's in the middle. He's gone. He's gone under. There it is. There it is. Right there. So got it. Can you see it cruising away there? That's about a five footer. Judging the size of a submerged crocodile is hard, even for experts. He's moving. Mark only has seconds to make up his mind, and he mustn't catch a female. Engine off. Engine off. You big. He's on. Yeah. Sorry. Is he too big? No. How big? Is he too big? Yeah. Well, he's on. I'm to get it off his nose. Having waited so long to catch one, Mark will have to let it go Sorry. as soon as possible. Well, there's the five foot. You think that's a gravid female? Well, well it's, it's that size that means you can't tell. Right. Well, we got to get that thing off him. I'm sorry. Well, let's uh, slacken that off. I'll try and slacken it off. Yeah, let it get tired first. OK. Yeah, it does look full belly, doesn't it? That's it's off. She's off. There's no damage done. And. The pregnant females a guarantee that at least some eggs will be laid this year. I'll tell you, it was it was it was cruising across the front of us, yeah. and the boat was still moving, and it was going, and we were going, and I I, re I reckon it was about five foot, and I had about one. I only was going to have one chance at that before, well, I, it was under the boat or whatever, yeah. and so I just went with the noose, and I caught it round the mouth with the noose, and I got it, but. Frank says, oh, no, it's, it's too big. But by then, the noose had closed on it. That, that, that's I think, the only I think one. that was our best chance, and that animal was the wrong size. It, it is a disappointment. We might not get one. But uh, I mean, we've seen upwards of 40 American crocodiles. <laughs> you can't grumble at that. A, a, a rare species, and we've seen 40. We've seen in three different locations. I mean, I'm perfectly satisfied with that. I haven't got to kiss it.